All right. Hey, everybody. It's Ornlu, and I was so close. I was so close to going to bed. I just checked Discord one last time, and then Tay, the uh, the speedrunner, posted that, oh, hey, there's a November pup balance change update. And I'm like, well, <sighs> I guess I'm not going to sleep just yet. So uh, Detective Ornlu had to figure out... Uh, these balance changes that were implemented in this patch and all the other changes as well. And let me just tell you guys, oh my god, this is a huge, huge, huge update. So definitely strap in because we're going to be getting a lot of stuff, both like uh, balance changes, I guess, and other multiplayer relevant changes. So let me get into that. I have a nice little notepad document here. Okay, so... Uh, also, guys, this is just from my own, you know, research and, like, scrambling for half hour, 45 minutes, just checking stuff out. So this is not, like, an official list. It may not include everything that is in the next patch that is, uh, you know, something that uh, we'll need to wait for an official announcement for. So definitely let me uh, know in the comments if you found anything that I might have missed. So, that said, first up, co-op campaigns. Hey, yo, we're now having uh, Tariq and Tamerlane. So uh, those are going to be available, so that should be lots of fun. And then we have... Oh yeah, yeah, map changes, guys. Oh boy. So first, Arabia. Arabia, guys. It's getting changed again, but it's, it, it's, it's getting something uh, you might not expect. Just Arabia. Regular old Arabia. Boom, KOTD Arabia. Yeah, Arabia, guys, is now KOTD Arabia. I've been casting the KOTD qualifiers uh, on my Twitch channel this past weekend. That's why my voice is kind of dead. But yeah, uh, I tested this out in both like uh, regular single player launching up a game and obviously here in the editor. And yeah, this is pretty crazy. So if you're unfamiliar with KOTD Arabia, it's a very, very open map. It's going to be a lot harder to play, you know, defensively in wall. You're going to have to be, <laughs> you're going to have to be walling a lot if you do want to get, you know, nice and safe early on. But I'll get to that uh, more stuff in a moment because there were some uh, nerfs as well. However, it is a less consistent map overall than the latter Arabia. And I actually say that in a positive, or I think that's a positive. Because you're not getting like, okay, it's like you have the, the wood lines all on the outside and then... You know, it's like the same map every single time. You get a lot of different versions of Arabia with this generation. Also, your golds are all the same, like they're the regular distance. Uh, you have elephants and rhinos instead of uh, boar. So I don't know if this is something that they want long term, or if this is just as a celebration of the upcoming uh, King of the Desert event, but uh, that is Arabia. Next, another very big map-related change. And it's going to be on Nomad. I'm just going to launch up a game for you guys so you can see. When you play Nomad, there's a five-minute treaty. So no villager fighting in the first five minutes of a Nomad game. This is a pretty big change when it comes to laming. Oh, that, that's great, Dengizik the Hun. But on ladder you can't really enforce a lot of the sort of house rules that we had on Voobly, where it's like, okay, no villager fighting before, you know, your first TC's up, and then, you know, no laming resources until, again, your first TC's up. Now, you still can, like, wall in enemy, uh, enemy resources, but you cannot, uh, you know, you can't fight with villagers before the, you know, or you can't just fight at all until the, the timer has elapsed. So that's a pretty big change to Nomad. Mostly it's just, like, as far as, uh, Enforcing some sort of order into ranked. But now here's going to be the big stuff, guys. Balance changes. And again, these are just the changes that I have found, uh, you know, in a, in a quick little scramble. So this might not be everything, but man, are there a lot of big ones. So first, we have a, a general change where houses... Where, where are you, house? House. Ah, here you are. Minus two melee armor. Yeah, that's right. In Dark Age, they have negative two melee armor. It makes house walls a lot less useful. It makes early drushes and especially men at arm rushes way more powerful. And it's going to be harder to defend early on. So, oh man, is this going to, you know, 
inclined the meta much more so towards that early barracks unit play, whether it be a Drush or a Men at Arm Rush. Scouts are probably going to be less useful, relatively speaking. Um, but yeah, that's that's a it, it's a pretty big change. Now the houses will get more armor as you advance through the ages. Uh, in my you know cursory glance, it was uh, negative one melee armor in feudal age, and then it go bumps up to one melee armor starting in castle age. So it's it's not like it's you know they're terrible throughout the entire game, but uh, yeah, that is a big big uh, nerf to uh, house walling in dark age especially. All right, so now on to some Civ specific changes, and just right off the bat, let me tell you guys, it is Revenge of the Infantry Unique Units. They are coming back in a big way. So actually, starting with Aztecs here. Jaguar Warriors, the Castle Age variant. They now gained an additional um, 15 HP. So they used to have 50 HP, now they have 65 HP. Considering a Long Swordsman has 60 HP, it just meant that Castle Age Jaguars were like worse than Long Swordsmen in terms of like defenses. And now they're going to be better than Long Swordsmen in terms of like really like every stat, uh, either equal or better. And considering the unit is more expensive and you have to produce it from a castle, I think that is pretty darn fair. Um, the Elite version, mind you, uh, is unchanged. So the Castle Age version is buffed. Elite version is the same. Uh, and this is not the only infantry unique unit that's getting this kind of treatment. So again, just keep in mind that these focuses are on castle age versions of uh, unique units, the infantry unique units, not the imperial age versions. Which I think is fair because for most infantry unique units, like the Jaguar, they're pretty bad in castle age, but then really good in imperial age. So just kind of balancing that out a little bit. Burmese are going to be our next civ. They do not have an infantry unique unit. But they do have a unique unique tech called how. Uh, I mean, they do have how to. <laughs> the, the one in question here is Vodapur Cavalry. It used to be Cavalry get plus six attack versus buildings and Arambai. Now it's Cavalry get plus five attack versus archers. Now this is done to make Burmese less vulnerable to archer civilizations because they they you know have the really bad armor attacks for archers at the blacksmith, so their skirms are a potato. Honestly, I don't think this helps, because when are you getting Monopore Cavalry? Post-Imp. The tech is 650 food, 40, 400 gold. You have to research it at the castle in the Imperial Age. I mean, at that point, Burmese actually already have elephants with 10 pierce armor or whatever. Yeah, they're doing fine against archers at that point. It's in Castle Age, early Imperial Age, where it's really not something that Burmese can deal with, and I don't think that this tech really helps them in that area where they are so weak right now so eh, i guess it could help a little bit but uh not really the correct uh you know medicine for the illness or whatever moving on now to byzantines they buffed their monk heal speed. I think this was the case in like Age of Kings and then they nerfed it in like Age of Conquerors. But now monks plus 100% heal speed. No, actually I think it was like plus 200% back then. But regardless, it went from plus 50% and you know, all of the recent 20 years um, up to plus 100%. So now monks are just healing up units like crazy. Again, Byzantines have been getting like these marginal buffs and they're going to sneak their way into being like a really, really strong civilization in a variety of map types. Like they already were. But, you know, you had the Cataphract buff where their uh, unique tech, uh, or sorry, their elite upgrade got cheaper. Then they got the buff where they got Town Patrol and Castle Age for free. And now their monks heal faster. It's like all these little buffs. It's like, hey, got to keep an eye out for Byzantines, guys. They're, uh, they're, they're getting real good. But moving on to the Celt... Celts in the infantry unique unit theme. The Wood Raider is getting a bit of a buff. The Castle Age version, that is. So Castle Age Wood Raiders now have plus two attack. They used to have eight attack. Now they have ten attack. Um, all the other stats are the same. The elite upgrade cost is the same. Uh, elite version is the same. So it's just the Castle Age version, now ten attack. Again, if we're comparing it to the Long Swordsman... Uh, Long Swordsmen now have one melee armor, so they do have that over Wood Raiders, which makes sense because uh, as buff as these guys are, uh, they don't really have any armor. Um, so Long Swordsmen will have five less HP, one less attack, but one more melee armor, and are a lot slower and cheaper. But yeah, again, we're seeing that the Castle Age Wood Raider is now a much 
more competitive unit and like viable relative to the long swordsman because you know when they made that big buff to the uh the infantry last patch where they uh reduced the cost of supplies long swordsmen and then they gave long swordsmen and two-handed swordsmen uh the extra one melee armor that sort of indirectly nerfed a lot of infantry unique units so now they're sort of being brought back up into line there's obviously a big focus here on uh, infantry which are kind of underused in age of empires so i, I can see why they're going for that next is going to be cumans this is going to be a small nerf actually archery ranges and stables now cost minus 75 wood wood so they used to cost uh, minus 100 wood in the you know previous patches now it is minus 75 wood. I can understand that. It was a little bit too strong and a little too easy to spam those guys down uh, in early game. It was especially strong in Empire Wars too. Um, I think this is fair. It's still a really good bonus. And I'm glad that they have this rather than, you know, not have it. Because this gives Cumans something that is not just, you know, building the extra TC in Feudal Age. So I, I still think this is a good change. It was just a little overtuned before. And now, you know, it's being more brought back into line. Ethiopians. They are getting a buff to their Shotel Warrior. Again, infantry unique unit. So the Castle Age Shotel Warrior, guys, it is now getting plus 5 HP. It used to have 40 HP, and now it is 45 HP. Also, their, uh, all the other stats are the same. Also, you have the Elite upgrade is much cheaper now. It used to be 1,200 food, 550 gold. Now it's 900 food and 450 gold. So you're looking at minus 300 food and minus 100 gold um, for the elite upgrade. So it's just... And, and to be fair, elite Chotel Warrior, it's not like the greatest like elite upgrade out there. Now it's, you know, it's f plus 5 HP, plus 2 attack, and plus 1 pierce armor. Like that, I mean, that's good, right? But it's not as drastic and it increases some other unique units. So I think it's fair that it's a, it's a cheaper elite upgrade now. But yeah, Chotel Warriors getting that little bit of a buff. Actually, let's just stay over here at the castle because now we're going to be going on to the Incas with their Kamiuk, the Castle Age version, guys. It's now getting plus 10 HP, so from 60 HP to 70 HP. Um, the Elite version is still at 80. And the Castle Age version now has one melee armor. Now, Elite Kamiuks have always had one melee armor. Now, the Castle Age uh, version of the Kamiuk is also getting that plus one melee armor. Again, it's just making these Castle Age infantry units more attractive relative to the Swordsman line, even though Kamiuks kind of do a different thing, but yeah, you get the idea. J -j 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 Japanese. Samurai. So, Samurai, plus 10 HP. They now have 70 HP as opposed to 60s, just like the Kamiuk, and then the uh, Elite Samurai, same thing. Um, Now they also get plus one attack? Uh, no, no, plus two attack. <laughs> okay. Like, no, no, Samurai had eight attack before, yeah. Now Samurai have ten attack in Castle Age, so now more than the Swordsman. And there's... Yeah, yeah, okay, they always had one one armor. Now they have one... One more... Two more attack. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, guys. Like I said, I'm tired. Uh, ten more HP, two more attack. And, guys, this is a big one. The Elite Upgrade is now much, much cheaper. 750 food, 650 gold. So it used to be... 950 food, 875 gold. So that's what, minus 200 food and uh, uh, 225 gold? Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a big decrease. Now Elite Samurai is one of the cheapest Elite techs in the game. And uh, it's going to make the Samurai a much more attractive option. And I think the Samurai especially was hurt by all of the buffs to the Swordsman line. Because Japanese Swordsmen are super good, as is. And they were a lot cheaper than Samurai, especially with, like, post-supplies. So now making Samurai a bit more attractive is, I think, totally fair. Because more than any other infantry unique unit, they were probably the most overshadowed uh, by just the basic swordsman line. Oh, let's just stick here, because guess what? Another infantry unique unit. m m, -m, -m The Gebeto now has plus 5 HP in the Castle Age. So they used to have 30 HP, now they have 35 HP. This, I think, is totally fair because it at least puts you on par with a crossbowman as far as HP goes. Uh, an elite skirmisher. So, yeah, that's, I think, totally fair. Uh, the elite version is exactly the same uh, as far as I can tell. The cost for the elite upgrade is the same. So, plus 5 HP. The unit's a bit tankier in Castle Age. Remember, a few patches ago, they had their frame delay nerf, or buffed. 
It's easier to micro them now. So Gabettos, I think, are low-key a super strong uh, support unit um, behind any sort of meat shield. All right, moving next to the poles. A polarizing civilization. So, they got a buff and a nerf. Actually, right here. Buff, they now have siege engineers. They used to not have siege engineers, which means that their siege workshop is pretty darn solid. You got siege rams fully upgraded. Onagers with siege engineers is totally fine in most situations. And then you have bombard cannons, again, with siege engineers. Really, really nice. Of course, the big one is the obuk. And it doesn't say it here, but I tested it out. And the obuk has a train speed nerf. They used to create in 9 seconds, now they create in 12 seconds. So that's a, what, 33% increase? And I think that is probably the best way to go about nerfing the unit. The unit's cool. The unit is good. It was just overtuned. It was a little too good at too many things. And I think that it having such a fast creation speed, especially even relative to other infantry unique units, was kind of oppressive. So now slowing that down means you just can't mass them up as quickly. Will they need more nerfs in the future? I still think that Elite Upgrade at 800-600 is super cheap, but still. This is like, it's a small nerf. Maybe they could use more in the future. Maybe this is fine. Um, I don't think the Obuk was like that crazy overpowered, like, you know, impossible to stop. Um, so yeah, I think this is appropriate. And then, you know, getting Siege Engineers alongside it, I think, makes the pulls a bit more well-rounded. Moving on, though, to another infantry unique unit, the Teutons. We have the Teutonic Knight now gains plus two attack and plus two melee armor uh, in the Castle Age. So they used to have uh, 12 attack, now they have 14. And then they used to have five melee armor, uh, two pierce armor. Now they have seven melee armor and two pierce armor. And the elite upgrade is going to be exactly the same as well. Um, with 17 attack, 10 armor, and two pierce armor. So again, just makes Teutonic Knights even better. Teuton Swordsman. Uh, get the extra melee armor, so now this just makes the Teutonic Knight even more uh, attractive as far as just that super heavy infantry dude, and even more attack is also good, but wait. Oh man, that is a big um, reduction in cost to their elite tech. Uh, the elite Teutonic Knight uh, tech used to cost 1,200 food, 600 gold. Now we're looking at 950 food and 500 gold, so that's minus 250 food and 100 gold. Uh, for the Elite Teutonic Knight upgrade. So now it's going to be easier to get your uh, beautiful cape, blanket wearing dudes, Deus Vault, and all that. Uh, so, yeah, another buff to that. And now for the final one. Oh boy, this is going to be the controversial one Vikings. First, we have infantry plus 20% HP starting in Feudal Age. So the, uh, the bonus used to be staggered plus. Uh, 10 in Feudal Age, 15 in Castle Age, 20 in Imperial Age. Now it's just 20% uh, starting in Feudal Age. It was the same treatment that Vietnamese got. It used to have the, the same, you know, staggering of HP bonus. So now it's just... Uh, the Viking Men at Arm Rush is actually a lot stronger right now. Because uh, you're getting an extra... What? We're at 54 HP? Then now they're at 58? I don't know. It's a, it's a nice buff. Uh, and it's going to make them a pretty darn scary, you know, Men at Arm civilization. But also, um, you have the Berserk, which also is going to benefit from these changes, by the way, because I believe the Berserk's HP profile is exactly the same, but um, they're getting, again, the Castle Age version is getting uh, a little bit more HP. Anyway, Castle Age Berserks. Now they are getting plus three attack. They used to have nine attack, now they have 12 attack. That's pretty cray cray. And they also get one melee armor. So now Castle Age Berserks are so much better than they used to be. That is pretty wild. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Also, um, the Elite version now costs 1075 food and 475 gold. So it used to be 1300 food, 550 gold. I don't, I'm too tired to do the math. Uh, so that's still a nice little uh, discount to the Berserk. But this comes at a cost, guys, and this is the controversial part. No more Thumb Ring. Vikings lose the thumb ring tech, which I know is going to make people unhappy because Vikings were like, okay, let's just play them and then uh, chill and go for fast imp arbalests, full upgrades, and then just mow people down. Their eco is just as good, but now you don't have that late game strength as far as archers go, not even like late mid game. And I know this is going to be controversial, but I actually think this is a good change. 
Vikings having the super insane eco, it's like a part of their sieve, right? It's always been the case that the sieve has had wheelbarrow and handcart free. And I kind of like the idea of the Vikings just having like, you know, the most powerful eco in the game. It was just a little too strong in tandem with Arbs. Even then, I think it's like borderline. I didn't think Vikings were like super OP before, but this just makes that Arb play not quite as good. And they, you, you can see this shift. They're trying to get Vikings to be more of an infantry sieve than an archer sieve. And like everyone just saw Vikings as an archer sieve because, you know, infantry just wasn't used all that much. But now they're really trying to push infantry in general and Vikings, you know, are a part of that as well. So again, I like this change. I know a lot of people aren't going to like this. A lot of people are going to be like, well, I just nerf their eco tax and or their uh, eco upgrades and then give them, keep them thumb ring. If you were to do that, I feel like Vikings would just be more generic. It's just like, okay, you're, you're, you're just making their eco not quite as good, but just keeping them with the fully upgraded arbs. Now you just have to have that distinction between the super insane eco but not quite as strong of an arb army. But your infantry are also uh, a little bit better as well, especially that Berserk and Castle Age. And so, guys, that's it. Um, yeah, that is a massive slew of changes. Again, please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. I'm sure I did. But yeah, this is a pretty crazy balance update. We'll see how this affects the meta. I'm so glad to see that even right after AoE 4 comes out, we're still getting a lot of love for AoE 2 because... This game always has a special place in my heart. So yeah, definitely let me know what you your thoughts are in the comments about this. And I'll see you guys next time.